This is Lin Chi, uh, brush painting for beginners. Uh, our backyard is nine blooming series just uh, started to open and that inspired me to do this. And um, in Chinese, a lot of times that people use this flower to representing the um, uh, you need to hold on to the present, the good times at this moment, not to let it go because it will vanish very quickly. Uh, night blooming is known, it's a cactus flower. Um, the particular variety, there's all different variety. Uh, some of them is not as sensitive to light as this particular species. This particular species are describing a lot in the um, Chinese poems that would only bloom at night. So a lot of poet that at night that they were waiting for the flower to bloom and drinking wine to celebrate the glorious flower. And um, then during the day, it just welting. And um, um, I'm using this particular paper we call uh, vintage single shawn is uh, a cut sheet, uh, nine by thirteen. We bought it about twenty five years ago. We bought a couple of thousand. We had a special uh, running maybe a year ago. Right now we have a couple hundred sheets left, and I call it as a fast paper. It's um, a little bit. Uh, uh, expanding in the water absorbency part. So you need to use a drier brush, but I personally paint dry. So I love this paper. The paper is an old paper. So made out of a lot of um, tree bark versus the newer paper use more annual material like uh, rice stock. So um, a lot of people were talking about the coming up challenges. Um, continues for 108 days in <clears throat> plus the 30 day challenge in June at OAS Live. They are um, gathering all their different scrap of paper they have left behind. And my encouragement is that enjoy the older paper because the materials are easier to show the br brilliance of the color and then also we love to hear your comment when you post your uh, work on OALS Live to tell us what kind of paper um, you are using and then your experience with the paper and then if you have any question want to know what kind of paper you're using send us a scrap we can describe it for you and uh, <clears throat> the brush I'm going to use I'm going to use a happy dot a uh, large orchid bamboo and uh, full lotus for the leaf. The flower mostly are done with the uh, orchid bamboo because it's a narrow um, petal and then the leaves is big cactus leaf. So I'm using this uh, full lotus brush. You definitely can use large flow or super flow. And so it's a large combination brush. And 
the color uh, I'm going to use the bright light is the Chinese watercolor on the budget side. We have choose this color um, to replace the Maurice because the Maurice the packaging of tube is very troublesome. So leaking is a major issue. We find this color is uh, decent and then uh, economic and uh, doesn't have the Marie's um, issue as far as packaging. Um, I'm going to use um, white. and carmine and rouge this is the uh, main color for the flower and on the leaves they have a mid yellow I kind of like to mix, mix the mid yellow with um, their uh, their tang yellow because it's a little bit on the warmer side, and then their um, rattan yellow is on the colder side. So those two together will be a good combination for my yellow. And the indigo. And um, I also use this bleed proof white for the center of the flower um, because it gives the intensity the, the tube white doesn't have. So I'm mixing the two yellow together and pick up some indigo to make my green. Oh, I forgot my best bottle ink here. And then I'm going to use a little bit yellow to warm up my white. And I also have a bleed proof white all by itself. So you added the yellow to the bleed proof white. White on it? one corner, and then I also have pure bleed proof white on the other corner for the center of the flower. And then I'm going to use the tube white from um, Bright Light, which you can see that I used a lot. So if I run out, I kind of like to use the uh, Da Vinci gouache white to replace. Uh, it does mix well with the bright light color. And then here is a um, carmine, and here is the rouge. A lot of times I like to uh, add a little bit rouge to the carmine, so it's not so um, harsh. So 
So this will finish my color preparation. And there was a lot of question about chip color versus bright light color. Um, and I'll talk about it on the end of the session. And um, I want to show you the preparation I did on the this, but this is the same paper. Usually my, um, my, um, work before was record. It's a, a lot better than what I can do doing the recording. So I thought I would show you a little bit what I did that before. So you also have a, a little idea where I'm going with the with the painting. And that one is on the this particular vintage single shawn. And I also did one on the water dragon paper that we uh, featured a couple weeks ago. The color is not as intense, but definitely it's more moisture control. I also will show you that while I'm practicing, I use some of our cardstock and I did um, some practice work on the same subject, just to show you that um, there is a variety of things you can do when you are trying to practice uh, a work. Is this the paper we sell as Western mounting paper? Mm, yes, yes. And then um, this is the paper label that I am using. So in case you want to uh, buy this paper, like I said, I, we only have a couple hundred sheets left. It's 25 years old, so we can't replace them. Uh, the size is about nine by 13. If you like um, fast paper, uh, this is an old paper that I think you'll enjoy. So first, I'm using my um, orchid bamboo. I'm loading the white. I would say about a quarter of the brush. And then I rinse off the tip. This is the way when you are mixing white with any other color and that way that you will um, be able to show the other color better. So then I'm loading the carmine and the rouge mix. And then I'm going to start paint my um, night blooming. I start with the top. You can see on this paper, this uh, bright light um, color is pretty transparent. So that's what we want for watercolor. The quality of watercolor is the, the transparency. And then the center, I first load the rouge. No, I'm sorry, carmine. And then mix with the rouge.
So this is my center. And then the same brush, I'm using the green and tip, tip with the rouge. Too much rouge. So it's worthwhile to note that you're using a lot of shape strokes when you build this flower. And we have an upcoming virtual office hour event on June 17th, where we're going to go into detail about the techniques for practicing these shape strokes. And it's a very powerful, essential stroke um, because it really is because of the diversity of flower subjects available. Once you get comfortable with this stroke, it really opens up a huge amount of possible subjects. So then um, now I'm using my full lotus brush. I like this brush, this brush comparable to Superflow and has a little bit more body to it. Definitely holds a lot of color compared to the other um, uh, brushes. And um, um, like I said, I have a tendency to do it dry. So um, I would like, if you don't have it, give it a try. So I'm first loading green, tip with indigo, more green. So Evan talking about the shape, you can see even better on this particular uh, stroke, which is the leaf stroke, and then how the shape is coming along. So this is the leaves. Then I'm going to use a little ink. So when you look at the cactus um, leaves, a lot of leaves are um, followed by um, by the other leaves. So I'm going to do So then um, I'm going to use 
So I'm not using any browns just because I don't have a lot of need for this stock. But what I would do is I use a little bit green with a little yellow. With the color. So I got this stock color. You definitely can use your brown. So. my brush out a little bit and I go back on the green and then I will do a little bit leaves on this one all right and then I'm using my happy dog Take with a little bit carmine. So that's my um, bud hold, calyx to hold the bud. And I use carmine verse and, and with the um, rouge to build my bud. And then I add more rouge going up to meet this. But and then I use a little stroke of green carmine. Finish the and then I'm going to use my original uh full lotus brush to do a little bit um happy dye for here okay now going back on the flower my flower is semi-dry but not completely dry and then i'm going to use my um bleed proof white completely pure bleed white for the center of the flower And then my uh, yellow and blue, blue white for the pollen. Okay, and then I, I'm going to sign my name. Sign.
And then um, I promise you we're going to compare the um, the bright light color versus the chip color on the green. So we had the 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 green here, and then I have chip uh, indigo, chip dark green, chip light green, and the yellow, and. To answer people's question about mixing two brands, we don't recommend it. We have tested. We don't. We didn't particularly test, say, Marie's with chip color, but we have tested um, Bright Light with Yasutomo's Chinese water color, Bright Light with uh, with um, um, Marie's, and then Marie's with Yasutomo. Usually, when you wet mount, it runs. Um, they separate. They, the usually either the indigo or the the yellow will separate from the green, and uh, uh, so our recommendation is do not mix two brands. You use one brand, and each brand has its own merit, and you can decide what you want to do with it. And I'm going to show you that um, side by side the comparison. So before we before we move on to that. Sure. Would it be fair to say that the issue is largely when you when you mix two different brands of colors, blending them together to form a different color? Like, say you will use the yellow and the indigo, like if you use Bright Lights yellow with Marie's indigo to make a green, and then in the wet mounting, you'll get separation where the, the, the yellow will separate from the indigo during the wet mounting process. That's correct. So if you don't, you, if you decide you don't wet mount, then that's not an issue. What about if you are just using the color, the pure color by itself? Like say you're doing a landscape painting and you use like a mineral green but you don't mix it with anything else. You just use it by itself. Would you anticipate there'll be fewer issues mixing colors in that scenario? Right. I think if you use independently uh, without mixing with other color, you will less have uh, trouble issues. Okay. So um, I'm going to have the Chinese chip green versus so now, now my brush is all clean. So. Miss Will. So compare this two color, the, the bright light is a little bit more green, grainy. It's not as, um, as transparent as the chip color. One more time. So just to be a fair comparison, because the other one is already dry, so I'm using the bright light next to the chip color. So you can see side by side comparison. So, you know, uh, Bright Light is not a bad color compared to price-wise, but if you are meticulous about um, this, the chip color is more transparent, it's smoother. And um, um, if you use uh, Ning Ye's formula, which is our uh, chunk yellow with uh, 
Winsor Newton's indigo, the color is even going to be prettier than this. It's smoother um, and um, um, more brilliant. But you can see that this chip color did not have much water separation from the um, on the paper and then bright light does the water does go out more. So I want to talk a little bit about that effect. Okay. So a lot of people when they're painting uh, with a moisture sensitive paper, they get this haloing right. and then they, they it bothers them. Um, and I think it's important to note that when it dries, all of that just disappears. Right. It's invisible. So you can see that this one does not show up. Yeah, so there was some haloing there and then it's already starting to dry and you can see the water mark around it. When, I, when we say haloing, we can see here where you can see the water is sort of uh, escaping out of the edges of the color, mm -hmm. okay? And um, it's really important that as you, if you're painting a com finished composition that you don't quit uh, if you get a stroke that looks like that. Because really, um, once it dries, it will be fine. It will look fine. And the only consideration is now you have this little pool of water so that when you place your other strokes, you need to be a little bit careful about where you place them so that you don't get um, color traveling along a canal that's provided by the water and uh, bleeding uh, um, in an undesirable way. Talking about halo, you can see the two different color that the chip color does have some halo too, but not as severe as the... Yeah. And you know, it's hard to know completely if it's the color, you know, you have to paint um, with these a lot so you can, you know, reduce the variables of, of your own you know, moisture loading, or maybe the brush was a little bit wetter on this stroke or not. But I think it is fair to say that uh, the, as the colors, uh, the color systems that we sell, as they get pricier, they blend and mix better with water. There's more transparency. There's prettier transitions between the water and the color. And so, um, you know, uh, these, are, these are the reasons why people will choose uh, to paint with, um, pricier colors, uh, higher quality colors. All right. Okay. Let's see here. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you're looking for supplemental information, in the description of the video, we're going to provide uh, links to three different supplemental resources. One, um, we have this virtual office hours on the Shape Strokes coming up. That's going to be uh, the 17th of June. So you can qualify to participate on that by placing any kind of qualifying order, uh, any order of any amount. Uh, so those of you who are international, um, you can buy some of our digital products um, uh, to qualify to participate in the virtual office hours and that uh, will help you avoid the high cost of international shipping. Um, the other thing, uh, uh, other relevant uh, resources for this, which we will place uh, links in the description about, are we have, a we have a previously recorded virtual office hour session that's completely on moisture control. So if you're interested in moisture control and disciplining your moisture control so you can work with these more sensitive uh, single ply papers, um, uh, we'll, there's a link in the description to that virtual office hour session. And then finally, we have our upcoming 108 uh, flower, 108 flowers in 108 days challenge. Um, this is, these challenges are largely uh, held uh, in our OAS Life Facebook group. We have a collection of talented and encouraging and supportive artists of all levels uh, in our OAS Life Facebook group. And they are posting their work and inspiring each other and exchanging information and just making a little community of uh, Chinese brush painting enthusiasts there. And we're very proud of um, the nature of that community and how um, 
how encouraging everybody is. So we uh, we encourage you to to check out our OAS Live Facebook group and to participate in our upcoming challenges. We are currently in the middle of a 30 day challenge in June. So we've got, uh, you know, just paint every day for 30 days and uh, post um, a example of the work that you're working on. Uh, and then we're gonna have a week break after that challenge and roll right into our 108 flowers and 108 days challenge. So if you wanna know more about our painting challenges, go check out, you can go to uh, Facebook and search for OAS Life, L-I-F-E, but we'll also provide a link in, our, in the description. All right, thanks very much everybody for watching. And as always, we wish you happy painting.